House Financial Services pushing forward with a uh, new plan, the Financial Choice Act. The proposed plan calls to replace Dodd-Frank, easing uh, financial regulations on bank. Joining us this morning, the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, Jeb Henserling of Texas. Mr. Chairman, good to have you back. Good morning. Thanks, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, has a lot of the things you've been uh, calling for for a long time. Repeal of the Volcker Rule, stress test less often, repeal Durbin Amendment. Does Congress finally have the bandwidth right now to seriously take this up? Well, the short answer is yes. I mean, in all the conversations I've had with the president and the vice president and the speaker, this is clearly a this year priority. I mean, unfortunately, uh, Dodd-Frank represents a greater burden on American business and all the other Obama-era regulations combined. It's dragging down our economy. It's one of the reasons uh, that we've had the slowest, weakest, most tepid recovery in the post-war era. It's why paychecks have stagnated for middle-income Americans, and their savings have yet to recover. And so, uh, yes, we absolutely have the bandwidth, and now we have the opportunity. We're beginning to see a lot of charts that uh, look at consumer credit, look at bank loans, C&I loans, real estate loans, and they're all rolling over. I wonder how much blame you put on Dodd-Frank for the way those charts look. Well, again, Dodd-Frank has been a huge drag on the economy. It's one of the reasons that we have, you know, suffered through one and a half to two percent GDP growth throughout the entire uh, Obama era. Uh, and so I believe that we have a lot of capital that is poised to come out of the sidelines. Uh, you know, uh, optimism, business optimism is up, consumer optimism is up, but they actually need to see something coming out of Washington. And so that's why it's important to get fundamental tax reform done. It's why it's important that we have economic growth for all, bank bailouts for none, which is at the core of the Financial Choice Act, that we have regulatory relief uh, for our community banks and our uh, credit unions that help fund a lot of our entrepreneurial ventures and small businesses. Entrepreneurship is at a generational low under the burdens of Dodd-Frank. And so it's just incredible. That's the so, feeder stock of jobs and business in the future. And we've got too many garages in America that are full of all cars and they need to be full of new startups. Congressman Henserling, I know this regulatory relief theme is very in right now, but we talked last week to one bank regulator, the vice chairman of the Federal Reserve, Stan Fisher. Listen to what he said about rolling back Dodd-Frank. Just listen to this. We seem to have forgotten that we had a financial crisis, which was caused by behavior in the banking and other parts of the financial system. And it did enormous damage to this economy. Thou millions of people lost their jobs. Millions of people lost their houses. Taking actions which remove the changes that were made to strengthen the structure of the financial system is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. How do you respond to that? Well, what number one, what Mr. Fisher ought to know is that what caused the crisis in the first place was federal regulators and federal policy in sending financial institutions to loan money to people to buy homes they couldn't afford to keep in the first place. Over 70 percent of all the troubled loans that led to the financial meltdown, all the subprime loans, were backstopped by Fannie and Freddie and Jenny. And so, number one, we had a failure of government policy. You cannot make an intellectual case that there was a lack of regulatory authority to stop the financial crisis. And so what, unfortunately, what Washington did was engage in activities of Washington greed, the greed to have power and control uh, over the entire economy. And listen, the bottom line is Dodd-Frank has failed. It promised that it well, would lift the economy, and it hadn't. It promised it would end too big to no, fail. It promised it, it would safeguard the economy. Too big to fail. I'm sorry? It promised it would safeguard the economy, not necessarily well, lift it. No, There's still no, loans go back. You go back and read P President Obama's quotes. He said that Dodd-Frank would, quote, unquote, lift the economy. Go back and check. They also said it would end too big to fail. It codified it into law. It said that it would help consumers, and instead we've got free checking cut in half, bank fees are up, the ranks of the unbanked have increased. And so what we're saying is, here's what we want. We want a better capitalized banking system. And so we have said that for banks that choose a 10% simple leverage ratio, that they can opt out of most of the Dodd-Frank regime, but it's an option. 98% of all banks, 98% of all banks, let me finish this one point, 98% of all banks that had a 10% simple leverage ratio survived the second worst crisis. It's about capital, not federal control. 
I think one could argue that consumers have borne the, brank, or the brunt of some uh, bad actions from some financial institutions. You've been oh, critical absolutely. of the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, the Bureau said nine months ago that $11.7 billion of relief had been provided to consumers through their actions, $3.6 billion in monetary compensation to consumers as a result of uh, enforcement activity. They point out $700 million in compensation a couple years ago uh, after Citibank was found to have been misleading consumers about uh, some actions that they had taken. Which of that is bad? Uh, you're saying that uh, the CFPB is a rogue agency. Would you roll back any of those types of actions? Well, what we do in the Financial Choice Act is we create an agency that is a an law enforcement agency, pure and simple. But our Constitution says Congress is to make the law. The executive branch is to enforce the law. And what we have is an agency, I think the only second government agency since the New Deal, that has been found unconstitutional by a three-judge panel of the second highest court in the land has found their structure unconstitutional. And so we have roughly two dozen major federal consumer protection laws on the books. We want an agency to enfor enforce it, but we also want there to be due process, we want there to be checks and balances, and we want to ensure that they actually help consumers. The number one consumer protection is competitive, innovative, transparent markets. And too often the CFPB has actually hurt markets. Again, it's one of the reasons that we have 15% uh, fewer credit cards and they're costing 200 basis points more. It's one of the reasons that free checking has been cut in half. It's one of the reasons that for many good uh, credit worthy borrowers, auto loans uh, can go up as much as $500. So this is an agency that number one uh, has hurt marketplaces. With respect to fines, I hope you know, I assume some of these people are guilty, but some of these people may be innocent because they didn't have their day in court. And so we just don't know. We also know this was an agency that was asleep at the will at Wells Fargo. That had to be the L.A. Times to break the story. It had to be the L.A. Uh, City Attorney's Office uh, to pursue that. So, you know, this was an agency that was asleep at the will. But the major problem is too often they hurt consumers and they are not subject to checks and balances due processes. We want them to enforce the law, not make up the law. Mr. Chairman, we're going to watch uh, the Choice Act. I wish we had time to talk some taxes uh, today, but maybe next time. Uh, so forward to it. Thank you. Uh, Jeb Henseling, of course, the chair of the House Financial Services Committee.